you for the Sutherland Grenier College Committee to invite us you know, to share uh, our researches. Thank you, Jane, for, you know, uh, for opening doors. You know, I have a lot to learn from you, you know, but you know, my brain is a little bit tired of this way of thinking, so I want to explore another way of thinking and to discover that our brain is much more than what we think. And, uh, you know, I think, so, uh, I want to explain the researches I did in, uh, uh, at the University of Tours in France. It's a university, uh, uh, decided to go to University of Human Science instead of being on the uh, real sciences, you know, that's it, I mean, uh, evidence-based medicine, science, and so. I tried to open doors in another way because I was unhappy with uh, all the time we spent, you know, to try to prove things, and it was difficult. So, thank you, Jane, to go on this way uh, because it's important. And I think when we look behind our hands, you know, there's a lot of things that we can imagine and see if we just open our minds in a different way. If um, if I look at that picture, for just for instance, to make the connection, what you see is. You know, it's glad, it's only pixel. It's only pixel on this, you know, pixel that's, you know, going to your eyes, and your eyes make their own organization and in relation with what you know. If I say that it's blue, everyone is okay, then it's blue, you know, because we learned it this way. If we had learned it was red, we would say red, you know. That. You know, that's important. So we see the world the way we have been taught to, to see the world. That's what's the reality. <coughs> if I say that it's a girl or a woman, a female, you know, everyone is okay with that. You know, and why? Because it's only black pixel on that wall. Okay? And then, Jane, if I just make now there's movement. On one, is this woman turning right to left or left to right, Jane? She's standing on the left way for me to turn right to the Okay. At this moment. Does someone see her turning to the left? Yeah. Mm. Who's right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And how you know that she's turning? Try to find out what's happening between your eyes and the wall. Is there a void in this room? Is this room is a void? If it's a void, you can't have information coming to your to your eyes. And then now, you know, so the field in which we are, you know, is not a void. It's full of information. And now feel how these information are going to your eyes. Is it going to your right eye, eye or your left eye? And then from your eye, can you feel with the anatomy you know, following the optic nerve, going into your brain, right behind you know, the, the optic cas chiasma? Look what's happening on the body of the sphenoid. What's happening on the, the third ventricle? Yes. You know, and if you look at this image now, putting your fulcrum on the back of your head, you know, a little bit on the back of your head, what information are coming? Now, something else. If you just look the moment where the feet is touching and stop at that moment where there's a neutral, the place where there's in a moment of immobility, what's happening? Who can make her turn on one side and then on the other side? So, and you know, because of that, because someone is going to tell she's turning right, other one she's turning left, there's wars on, the, on our world. There's a lot of wars everywhere just because of that. There's a lot of wars in our relationship with our wife and her husband and between schools and everywhere just because of that. 
That's crazy. And I'm not going to fight with Jane. You know why? <laughs> because I love you. <laughs> love is the only solution. <laughs> I will come back to that. <laughs> you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you see, you know, there's deep changes in our society now, in ourselves, in everywhere. The grounding, Jane was using this image of grounding. I like this image of grounding, and we'll do it in practice. It's different now, you know. When you see the stones put there to build a new something, you know, now with the tensegrity model, you see these, all these uh, uh, buildings that are, that are built in a very different ways than just putting stones one on the other. You know, that could be different. When, you, when I arrived by Heathrow yesterday, I was so amazed to see how it works, you know, this, this uh, aeroport. Mm -hmm. That's so, so this grounding is based on individuality. All of us, we are based on individuality. 100 years ago, the thinking was the thinking of a group. You were a female born in that family. You have to obey and to do exactly what has been said to you to do. You were in, a, in France. Uh, you, know, you had to obey the social system where you were. And that's it. So now there's, so this change makes difficulty to work in team. And there's new frontier at every level. So from this new frontier, we can have new perspectives to, to see the world. And on, in osteopathy, these new perspectives are really present in uh, Steele's book. And I'm so thankful to John Lewis. I didn't say hello to you through your book. You know, I, I want to come back more on your book because there's so many things that led us to that place. Everything was present on Steele, like in many other people. It's amazing how at the same moment in our world, there were Anman, Virchow, Steele, uh, Pasteur, uh, all these people you know, who had from the same generation, having the same uh, Steiner, and all these people at that same generation, they opened, they built the foundation of the world we are in. So these new perspectives for me are heart-centered. If you're centered on your heart, you know, nothing can happen, and you can have safe relationships, I think. And centered on our heart, that means we have to begin by self-esteem, empathy, and altruism. Once again, maybe it's a dream, but... Uh, so, the human being, all of us, as we are, individuality, are just a universe among billions of connected universe. Can you imagine that if I had said to my grandfather that we can walk on the moon, he would say, stop reading Jules Verne. No, it's not good for you, you know that. Yeah, that's true. But now we know there's billions of universe, or solar system. For me, in my brain, it seems very complicated to think this way. So I think still say, was saying that uh, osteopathy was a squirrel in the tree of knowing, and we just see the tail. And I think Jane is uh, one of these squirrels, and maybe I'm another one. And all of us, we are different squirrels in the same tree. We are sharing the same tree of humanity. Uh, so this tree lives in a field. That's important. Here, can you feel in the room? Right now, when we are centered on thinking of something, can you feel the walls of the room? Can you feel the quietness coming in the room? Can you feel the way you're breathing? Every one of us is important in this place. And if one of us is not like, I didn't see Taj, you know? So she was supposed to come. She's coming later. Okay. So Taj is missing, you know? And that's, you know, that changed the, the room. So there's different manifestations. And we have to go into an integrative vision of healthcare. The thoughts between. So, and I, I put this image because that was for me a really important moment to think of that. Because uh, I don't know if some of you were at the conference Medstone in June 2006 when uh, 
you know, Steve Palace came with the walking staff of steel and giving to Renzo Molinari, saying that now all osteopathic research was, the, you know, the leading point of osteopathy was in Europe, no more in the States. You know? And uh, remember, the, there has been a book from uh, Norman Drevitz called The Dio, who was saying that osteopathy uh, has a lost generation. And then Jim Jevis did that very well-known speech, I don't know what, in the AO conference, saying that osteopathy was dead. And I remember when I, for my study, I gave an interview, and all these interviews are here, I will speak of it later, and when I gave an interview to John Wernham, I remember when he said, no one is doing, uh, uh, you know, uh, just adjustment. No one is practicing adjustment, so osteopathy is dead. So, and you know, Steve Paulus came you know, and he gave this uh, walking stick and I think saying that in Europe there was something happening and that's why we are here. I think we are part of that movement. So thanks to you again. So if we see human system, it's a coherent, complex system. There's not only the, pas the patient, the therapist, but there's the environment too. And the interface, that's a place where there's something happening in that interface. All of us, we came from different places. Can you feel that interface? It's the conference we are in. In that conference, there's a dynamic relationship of interconnection, presence, retroaction. Every time someone is doing something, you know, it's coming back on others. It's in relation with the awareness, the conscious we have and we have to be aware of the non-conscious, and it's a cybernetic multi-direction relationship. So that's coming to, to the subject of my, of my presentation, and then we will do some practice, if you're okay for that, to experience the, my, my, the way I'm teaching. You know. So uh, for me, teaching palpation is a subjective way. You know. Once again, I don't want to say that what objectivity, looking for objectivity is wrong. It's just, uh, just speaking from my own point of view. You know. So it's a subjective phenomenon. The way palpation has been taught is often dogmatic, when with uh, an identity based on defensive boundaries, you have to learn that model because it's, you know, the, the, the high velocity uh, technique is the right one, the functional technique is the right one. So we go into that defensive model, the biodynamic way is the right one. You know, I don't think that's putting boundaries like this. John Pledger used to say that uh, as each time you put boundaries, you will need more energy to take off these boundaries. Mm -hmm. Training, so the training is throughout the life. We have to develop skills and to develop introspection, Jane said it, it's through reflexivity. We have to, to have a feedback of what's happening so we can learn. And so we have to move from the teaching posture and find a scientific model. So <coughs> I went from my MSc in, to a university in human science and I say, okay, here is my question. I have an hypothesis. Can I do something with your tools? And the vocabulary, the tools in human science are very different from what I learned. <coughs> and uh, but I think that could be interesting. And in France, we were 12 you know, member of the French Academy of Osteopathy, who did into that MSc in Human Science. So my, case, my question was, that is there an engineering and specific strategy for teaching palpation? Uh, in, my, in my hypothesis, I thought, you know, it need to take into account many subjective elements of interaction. We were speaking of that already. So I think research is having a question, putting an hypothesis, and then looking for the techniques that can be worked. Like with a patient, I don't go with my technique and say, okay, I'm gonna apply to all my patients that technique. That's not the way I'm working. Patient is coming, he has a question, and with learning that question and, and feeling into my heart, I try to find out the, the tools I have in my toolbox that are useful to work. So I did this. What's regarding teaching palpation, what a question. So, in, a, in a, the conference 2004 in, a, in Maidstone, 
I did 20 interviews that have been published. It's in French and English, you know, and it has been published in 2005. And if there's SCC interested, there's a lot of, of these journals at the French Academy that has not been sold. And so the, the, I can give you a quick list of the interviews. There were Fred Mitchell, Anthony Schiller, Jean-Pierre Barral, Viola Freiman, Colin Dove, Christian Fosson, Simon Fielding, Michael Patterson, Michael Kuchera, Ken Lossing, Zachary Como, Peter Balgrave, John Parson, John Wernham, Frank Wheeler, Brian Dagenard, Renzo Molinari, all these people were there. That's, uh, and I, I asked them, we, we were four doing this, we asked them the same question, how to teach palpation? And so from there, you know, we had this human science methodology that means Analysis, an analysis of the interview through the words they are using. And that's really interesting. That's not the way we are used to, but Americans say words are liars. But words are maybe liars, but also they show us part of the truth. So what I learned <coughs> from that study, that palpation is a major, one of the major principles in osteopathy. The teaching and learning need a feedback. And that model that we can experiment is succeed and then understand. Like Montessori, you know Montessori teaching, and that, that means a bottom-up way of learning. In, at school or here we have learned, you have a teacher who says things, by a point, by two points there's only one line. Okay? But now we know that by two points there's an infinity of lines. I mean, it's not true. So we learned everything and then we apply into our hands what we have learned. So we try, I try to apply another model, which is you succeed, like Jane said also, you have to congratulate when the, the student finds something, and then you make up your mind and you make up your own model, which is different for, for all of us. So there's different levels of palpation, that's why it's difficult to, to find. And it's led to perception, and the link between palpation and perception is a really interesting subject, but I don't have time now. But what's important also in, the, in this interview, it's in relation with the intention, the attention, and the motivation of the, the one doing the, the palpation. And there were this question, some of the teachers I asked said, osteopathy is a science, we have to follow the evidence-based medicine uh, uh, program. And other teachers said, no, it's an art. We are all different, and we have to apply this art. So, other element that was important in that study, that the personal development of the osteopath is a tool that's important. Also. There's a permanent cognitive change. What we do in our office today is uh, different from what we did two days ago. Mm -hmm. Every time there's a change. The autonomic system that mm -hmm. led what we feel is a chaotic and complex system. So it's difficult to go into analysis. And there's so an induction way of teaching. And uh, we, have, we can use the logical way or a biological way of learning through our biology, and uh, that our biography influences our biology. What I look today, you know, is, is in relation with in what I have lived in my life, what my parents live, what the environment lived. If you just see a uh, uh, picture of this of a patient coming, when you look at the, the relation between structure and function, you know, that's, you see that <coughs> the, the emotions shape the anatomy. Maybe I have no more. I need to add it. That room? No? It's 30%? Okay. Yeah, it's 30%. So it's not that. No, it's okay. I don't know what happened. Maybe I said something wrong. There <laughs> <laughs> must be a reason somewhere.
So we see that um, biography influences our biology. And so in the work we are doing, we can just follow you know, the, you know, from our perception and then follow the movement at present. So in the discussion I had on that research uh, thesis, you know, I, so the, uh, I adapted the concept of Jean Piaget, which is a Swiss uh, uh, teacher who that model. That the osteopath is a self-reflexive actor of his own well-being. That means working on others. In fact, we are working on ourselves, looking for our own well-being. I'm sure if one day I feel I'm okay, I will not treat any patient anymore. I think I will play golf. You know, <laughs> you have golf there instead of being here. I would have to come and play golf. Also. I have a lot of fun now. I'd rather play golf or tasting whiskey or I don't know that's, that's, that's the cognitive sensory motor resources are non-linear starting from the bottom up intelligence which is complementary from the other part of intelligence and this perception action model that means the teacher is a trainer following the intuition and not a deductive intelligence and the students need to have qualitative sensory motor practice remote ego and be in the presence. I think touch the native language of the brain. I can't explain it here. And so this work is a practice of transformation. I would say more. I think it's a practice of transmutation, but I'm shy to put it on words because I don't want to be burned somewhat. So that's, that's a kind of uh, uh, alchemic uh, vocabulary. And so I think we are alchemists. That's why we are dangerous. And, uh, so, okay. So we behind the five senses and world, we are developing other senses. And I can use this word from Jen Gandhi, which is a felt sense. That means the felt sense is that uh, systemic experience in a holistic environment. Then we focus on the vibratory fulcrum, and then we put words on sensation. What I call a vibratory fulcrum, what we're going to do in practice in, in, a, in a while, it's uh, that everything is moving. You see a wheel, you know that, you know, I use the word from one of your students, Jane, Donna Taylor, you know, who I was the jury when she had that thesis on the fulcrum, and I really appreciate the work she did. And she was speaking of fulcrum as a geometric point of balance to maintain homeostasis. So, and uh, remember, Sutherland was speaking of fulcrum like the axis of a force uh, or in the balance. It's, just, it's not the place where everything is moving. It's just a place where it seems there's no movement, but that's the place where you have the inherent potency. So it's an autonomic shifting point, like in a, uh, automatic cars. You don't have to change gears. You know, it's changed from itself. And the presence of the therapist can be a fulcrum, as teach Pierre Tricot, one of my friends, a teacher. So in the education of the osteopath, where I am now, I think we have to learn anatomy first. That's OK. Physiology, biochemistry, how things are changing in our world. But also, we have to include the psychosomatic, the influence of the shadow part of ourselves. You know, that's so huge, like the shadow part of the universe, so huge. We have to be aware of the environment, including the experience 
and the phenomenology, that means the way we see the world. In the perception, so in the perception of the body, we don't see the body from outside, you know, trying to explain, but it's starting from inside and so looking from what's coming up. Instead of just looking the cause, osteopathy is looking for the cause, and for me now it's looking not a quantity, but the quality of what we touch, just on our hands. Instead of looking for stages, like uh, when working on a cadaver, we have state things. You're going to see on the movie that when we go under the skin, we discover a new world that processing all the time. Each of us here, we have 50 uh, billion, thousand uh, billion uh, cells in our bodies. Okay, so if we add all that, <coughs> if we add with all that in this room, you know that's amazing. And all of these cells have uh, their own intelligence. <coughs> Instead of just analysis the body, we have to look also from a holistic point of view. When you see the psychoanalyst, you know, now the movement is changing on the psychoanalyst. The people have been for 10 years, 20 years into analysis, always analysis, always pointing the place where it hurts, you know, maintaining that place. And sometimes we do, do one or two sessions and having that holistic view, and they change everything from their point of view. It's, we started osteopathy, learning the body from a mechanical point of view, and at school, osteopathy school, we still, we still have to know that mechanical model, but then we went to the functional model, then to the biodynamic model. I go quick, but I can speak a, a day of that. And now I think we are in a cosmic model, including the whole universe. And all these different models are still uh, working, I think. Instead of trying to isolate the problem, it's coming from the, the liver, from that. For me, it's integrating the problem. And not only in osteopathy, but with the other healthcare practitioners. We don't have to be in a, a isolation point in osteopathy. It's integrating the liver. And instead of being an abstraction, what we feel in our hands is a, it's a really concrete. <coughs> All this has to be perceived in the perception field, which is like a tor, you know. And what makes this tor is the connective tissue. If you just look at a cell, I said we have billions of cells. <coughs> ah, it's not working. It's okay. If you just touch a cell, you know maybe that that, move, that video. If you just said, touch a cell, then the cell disappears. So everything in, in our body is in relation with that extracellular matrix that are present partout, everywhere. And uh, so the extracellular matrix is the largest organ of the body. I think it's the main tool we are using in our work. It functions like a liquid crystal. The sound acts on the cell like a biochemical molecules. And the light, you know, there's biophoton from dynamic stillness, like the fishes into the abysses. So that's why I did this experimentation with uh, Jean-Claude Gamberto. And so we noticed that if we just, that picture of what you have under the skin when you just put a, a, a microscope, and you see on the first one, that's the fascia just under the skin, and you see the, the surface exposure, like this, we measure, measure it. If you do a fascia treatment, like here, you see the little you know, vein and arterial that are expanded. It's the same ones, in the same place, just, you know, there's an expansion happening. If you just look at the tensional force there, these are the, the the, the uh, connective tissue under the skin. When you have the group here, if you just put your hand doing a fascia treatment, you see the tension on the uh, fibrillar extracellular matrix changing. Everything is changing. And there's new element coming that was not there before. If you look from here, stop on this, that's a normal fibers, and you see when 
you put your hands on it, you see that's slightly different. So we decide to put that image in black and white, and what's that what we, we saw? When it's at rest, you see those little black things, we don't know what it is yet, and when we put our hands on that, there's more of them, you know, there's huge changes everywhere. Okay. So, that, that I, I want to show you, so what we, we decided to do that, that movie to, to explain you know, what we see under the skin. So I have the movie in French or English, your, your choice. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also, there's on the DVD, there's a lot of bonus showing these images, but we don't have time. medical practice which is nowadays recognized both by European and French authorities. Osteopathy in itself is an arm for patient. A study underlining this fact has been directed by Board of CHU Neonatology Service. Osteopathy involves the whole body to recover an overall feeling of well-being though not substituting itself as an allopathic medical care, but acting in addition to this. Osteopathy consists of an overall global understanding of the patient, forewarning, diagnosing, and manually treating or healing the mobility dysfunctions of the human body's tissues, which might alter the state of health. Osteopathy aims at homeostasis, a self-regulation which exists at the cellular level as well as in the inner human body and environment. Starting from the unicellular being, the paramecial links may be highlighted as taking a backward step and then adapting themselves and responding to a mechanical or chemical aggression whereas it adopts a strategy of transformation in line with nature's balance, as you may see here. The laws that govern the extremely small, are they not the same as those that rule the infinitely big? Anatomy has been taught as a pile on many different levels, straight line and right angle. But when you see this in the nature, it is man that has created these lines and angles. The most beautiful trees are the ones that have beautiful fruit, and they are not the straightest. When one looks at the movement of seaweed, the movement repeats itself in all its elements. It swims in a pool of joint information. Nature is true and authentic with regards to the information it conveys throughout biocommunication. Within nature, the numerous kingdoms, whether animal, mineral or plant, are all synthesized by human mind. They enable us to seek for unicity, the unsaid and perceptions of the natural language that humans have forgotten. 
The human being can be considered as a natural, priceless jewel being 5 million cells strong, which imparts a higher level of capacity to adapt and transform itself. The invisible hand of the osteopath serves as a witness, the go-between and the fulcrum between the inner interception and outer outerception environment. Osteopathy practice includes a wide range of techniques such as those which consist of feeling the body while following its constitutive tissue, fascias, by the practitioner placing his hands upon the tissue. This aims at participating to the body's self-regulation and to a healthy recovery. The practitioner aims to project himself inside the patient's own sensitivity and sensory environment. Poets have always perceived the body as a reflection of the mind. It is the sense which develops the earliest in the intrauterine life. The test on cervical spine joint enables to register the tissues underlying responses and potential and balance. Perceptions in relation with the sense of touch as a biophysical capacity connecting the living to environment. Tactile corpuscles enable the gathering of sensory information. A mechanical transduction induces a cascade of reactions and aberrant actions which modify the structure of the matrix and cells, influencing the global functioning and the environment. Skeleton cells are modified transmitting chemical information everywhere. The neurosensory receptor of the patient and the osteopaths communicate between them in the same way as we do when we enter into the ocean's energized water. These sensory informations are hard to reproduce identically and subjectively. It is therefore difficult to evaluate by these statistical methods, but they are repeatable and transmissible. Sense of touch is equally the most active at the end of life when the sense of view, the sense of hearing, of taste, and that of smell become impaired. The mobilizing of hands on a patient leads to sensory reaction ductlessly relayed by the central nervous system independently. Respiratory movements, rapid eye movements, changing of body temperature and that of tissue, visceral reflex loosening or tightening, all of these reactions validate the concept of the osteopathy. Placebo effect may take place, but still change comes from the osteopathic technique through the patient's feedback and interaction between the patient and his environment. These reactions are visible with babies as with animals in terms of letting themselves go, <coughs> relaxation, gentleness, relationships. It is a win-win exchange of energy. Dr. Gamberto has shown the undeniable and tangible action of messages and manipulations. By manipulating in a multi-directional way, body tissues will respond and convey information to the whole human body as it would do in nature. La médecine, telle qu'elle est pratiquée, la homéopathie, ne règle pas tout. Il y a tout un plan de, 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 de mots, de mots contemporains, qui ne sont pas des douleurs franchement pathologiques, ce ne sont pas de véritables, ce ne sont pas des épidémies, ce ne sont pas des fractures, ce sont des sensations de, de, de douleur, de mal-être, de, de, de déséquilibre. Et là, vous avez un point qui est fondamental et qui a été nié, c'est vrai, pendant, euh, pendant le XXe siècle, parce que, bref, parce qu'il valait mieux vendre des médicaments et que, que c'était plus facile, je pense. Les ostéopathes ont une action indubitable mécanique sur les structures.
Je, je, je crois que plus personne n'a besoin de poser euh, des appels. Jean-Claude Gambert to ID was, during surgical procedures, with of course the consentment of patients to study with an endoscope and enhancing ten times more what happens under the core of connective tissue to the interested liver of matrix. The stunning beauty of these images have gone all around the world, thus revolutionizing the approach of life and suggesting several tracks for the exploration of the all over existing supporting tissue, thus making of it an intangible tissue of the living. Dans ces techniques, donc cette recherche d'un point d'équilibre, elle peut amener à un moment d'aller plus profond au niveau des tissus. Le travail de facial peut se faire par un déroulé au niveau des tissus conjonctifs. Suivre la formation que montre le bras, relâchant, remontant dans la globalité, sans chercher à faire quelque chose. Et quand il y a des informations de blocage ou de tension, le bras va le manifester. Et le tissu conjonctif à l'intérieur du corps continue à ouvrir, éliminant donc, des tensions qui ont pu être enquistées. Des notions de rythme, d'espace, de temps sont essentielles. On passe par des points d'arrêt et pendant ce temps, que se passe-t-il sous la peau An experiment carried out by a team of osteopaths from the frog consisted of visualizing the effects of the action of a sciuropathic hand under the skin. First of all, let's have a look at an image of some magnification, images of synthetic compressed mesh, no apparent movements from an artificially assembled tissue. And then the movements from connective tissue when nobody puts their hand on the skin. A very slight backward and forward movement points out the tissue's vitality. That movement is not a one-dimensional one. It forms the tensions and compression that come from the stereos from the interior. Here, images taken from an assistant is asked to place her hand on the skin without doing anything therapeutic. Very little difference with previous images. It even seems as if the living tissue's intrinsic movement are less important, as if it were fixed. Here, when traction is put on the skin and massage. The movement of the connective tissue is undulant. It rolls, sways, swings, following manual information provided from the exterior. Here the transformation when an osteopath uses all of his senses of synergy, placing a hand and he does a facial stretching. This is no longer a message coming from the exterior, but a tuning in of the tissues to participate with the rhythm and the movement, and then lead to an exaggeration in the sense of listening to the reactions of the tissue. This reaction is not balanced, but pulsations, vibrations around the balancing point. Here, a manipulation carried out from a distance. The therapist puts his hands 
30 centimeters from the camera and does an active manipulation. From a distance, a change of tissue is seen like a wave on the surface of water. An intent without movement visible by the therapist. A giving off of heat, a light coloration of tissue signals that some work is being done but not really movement at least at that level. Là, 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 oui, mais que, que bouge une structure musculaire et indubitablement, il y a un mouvement au niveau des fibres. Ça, ça bouge beaucoup moins, mais ça bouge un peu moins. What is the underlying connective tissue structure that osteopaths call fascias? On a eu une, une vision de l'anatomie au début du XXe, même, même avant, hein, où il y avait des organes, des organes nobles. Je sais pas, on prend un os, on prend un muscle, on prend le nerf, une artère. Bon, et là, vous avez grosso modo les éléments essentiels pour faire un bras, une cuisse, etc. Mais, entre, il faut bien qu'il y ait quelque chose et pour réunir tout ça. Donc, il y a une information qui passe entre l'os, le muscle, le nerf, l'artère, tout ça. Donc, on a, dénommé, on a nommé ça le tissu conjonctif. Bon, c'est parfait. Mais en fait, moi, ce que je vois avec l'endoscopie, et comme je le disais tout à l'heure, c'est parfaitement reproductif, c'est-à-dire que tout le monde peut le voir, il suffit de, de, de le faire. C'est qu'en fait, ce tissu conjonctif, oui, il existe, mais il va partout. C'est-à-dire qu'il rentre dans le muscle, il rentre dans la peau, il constitue les artères, il pénètre dans les nerfs, et les os, il constitue les os, et, et on n'a jamais de ligne euh, franche. By using touch intentionally, the sensation that we perceive is a direct sensory evidence. Something is going on under our hands. The patient's reactions show a somatic reaction. By exploring this, we enter into another yet unknown territory, not even visible to the naked eye. This does not go to say that this is not reality. Biological reactions that are displayed by patients are a reality and amazing. When the osteopath places his hands over a patient and starts to have intentional active or passive mobilizations, we can see the sensory reactions. We can witness the change in the patient's breathing, rapid eye movements and changing temperature in tissues. These are not all artifacts and could be easily analyzed. Skin, the osteopath collects information and is informed by the sensibility of the connective tissue which creates this connection. Tissue responses obey the language and these informations are transmitted by water and land. On ne peut pas comparer vos activités à celles de quelqu'un qui ne connaît strictement rien et qui va se contenter de tirer un peu la peau. Euh, non, je crois qu'il y a rien. Il y a une façon de faire qui doit être douce, bien ciblée. Et, le... et quand vous faites ce mouvement de rotation, je ne peux pas m'empêcher de voir ces fibres qui vont bouger, glisser les unes sur les autres, s'écarter, s'étirer, se dissocier pour revenir ensuite, quand vous arrivez à arrêter le mouvement, revenir à une situation de repos qui est sûrement assez proche de l'état antérieur, mais pas forcément. Puisque j'ai pu constater qu'il y, y a des fois où euh, le retour à la position repos ne se fait pas de la même façon que le déclenchement du travail. C'est-à-dire, euh, quand vous tirez, il y a des fibres bouges, vous remettez en position repos avec un mode de fonctionnement, vous retirez et les fibres vont bouger à peu près de la même façon, mais il y en a certaines qui vont être différentes. Extracellular matrix is secreted by the fibroblasters, which are basic connective tissue. 
It is a water gel acting as a glue which, but still conveys information the way the film shows it. The ultra structure reveals the double function of fiber blaster. The end, on the one hand, at thin sertizing activity and exuding fibers and the fundamental materials of connective tissue. On the second hand, they also provide enzymes necessary for the breaking down of proteins of the extracellular matrix. The fibroblaster of connective tissue are necessary for permanent renewal. There's a communication between different fibroblasters and the connective tissue exists. Il y a quelques séquences où il y a un amas de cellules de type fibroblaste et on tire sur les fibres et on voit la cellule bouger. Alors elle bouge parfois individuellement, c'est-à-dire qu'il y a une qui bouge ou deux, et parfois en groupe. C'est-à-dire qu'il y a une bonne dizaine. Mais quand euh, Euh, on regarde un, un, un amas de fibroblastes, j'ai euh, essayé de compter combien il pouvait y en avoir à peu près, mais on arrive très rapidement dans les 5 millions de cellules. 5 millions de cellules, ça, ça, sur une toute petite structure. Donc c il y a une densité énorme, donc quand on tire dessus, elle se déplace quasiment toute en même temps. Et c'est très... Alors tout à l'heure, on, on parlait de quelques analogies, mais quand on voit ces cellules bouger, on a l'impression que c'est un bord de poisson. L'ostéopathie, en fait, c'est un retour intelligent et qui, qui se doit d'être scientifique à des pratiques qui étaient plus anciennes et qui se sont avérées efficaces. Osteopathy is part of the manual sensory medicine due to the presence of manual contact and resonance. Osteopathy is a go between the patient's interior which can fight in itself and the environment. This exchange of information allows a return to health, a world evolution towards well-being and happiness in the very core of life. Now I propose a practical experimentation. It's not working. Yet. So I uh, had planned to show you in practice the way I'm working from that perception action model. And if you want to do it, you know, on yourself by two. And uh, if it's, uh,
So, and um, maybe we have time for a few questions afterwards, or you, it's better to have questions now and uh, have 15 minutes each. I, I, th I think let's move to the table. Okay. Afterwards. Yeah. Okay. So the what I propose you as a practical experimentation like is just to have. I think it's important when we go somewhere. You know that uh, map and territory story. You know if you don't have the map, you don't go somewhere. You know if I didn't have the map to come here. So I propose you just an experimentation on the longitudinal axis of a patient. You know as a fulcrum. If you just can you feel on yourself just now? Can you sit on your pelvic area? Just feel the way you're seated, what, you know, what the gravity makes you uh, as fulcrum. Can you feel the, the bottom of your, your, uh, your ischio, the feet? Okay, right now. Can you feel the difference in the room? Everyone just had the awareness of looking for his own axis. And all of us, we have different axes. We don't, we are not, have not axes like the walls of here. We are all different. Now from this axis, quickly, you can feel your grounding through your feet. Can you feel that you go through the floor, then the ground floor, then into the, the earth? Can you feel the minerals that in the earth? We are full of minerals. We need all these minerals from the earth. We can feel that through the earth, we have the connection with our ancestors, with our parents, grandparents, on our mother's side, on our father's side. Feel this connection. And if we go deeper, we go into the center of the earth. What's in the center of the earth? It's a fire. It's a wonderful, huge fire. You know, when you see a volcano, you can see during a volcano eruption, you know the, the fire getting out. So can you feel that fire, that powerful fire? It's not the devil there. It's a powerful fire. You know? We don't have to be afraid of getting there. And in there, you can put that fire into your hara, into the center between your umbilicus and your sacrum, where the women carry our babies. Can you breathe in there? And from that place, can you feel that stable place? Can you feel your vertical axis? The way we are suspended like the trees by the top of the head? And feel the light coming up from the top. Relax the jaw. Relax the buttock. Relax the diaphragms. Can you breathe in? Open the sternum. Feel there's more space and feel now how it's different in the room. Feel the field in the room that's different. <coughs> and can you just connect these vertical axes, these longitudinal axes, on yourself? And we will do it in practice on, on others. Okay? So feel the change in the room now, and maybe if you want to come back, and uh, may I have a model? I will show the way I work on someone, maybe then. Yeah. 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 is to think of ourselves. So we have to be ready, ready physically mm -hmm. to practice some gym and exercises in order to be aware of our body, breathing. Well balanced, mentally let all the phones and problems outside our brain. Just be ready. Then ask mentally the permission. You know, this patient is a lying position, that in a position of taking power. We are really to be aware of this, and uh, not especially for here, but in France, there are so many young therapists now. Huh? We are 20,000 or so. Really, really and the number 35 at the French Register, like the Gios, you know, the number 35, and one of the 
he knows a lot. Uh, so I think it's important to, to have them know how it's important to respect our patients. So first, and then I need to have a clear intention. What I, what's your question? Okay. What, you know, I want to, to assess with kids. And I will ask my hands to give me it's an image. And uh, I ask my hands, but I don't know exactly what's, what's happening. So my idea is just looking for this longitudinal axis, vertical axis. Do you think, and the ones who are in front, I will just see when you have an axis, there's someone on the back, you can see that. Even before I put my hands, what came to my hands, this information, there's an imbalance. And this leg is more open. You know, it's like this vertical axis is going along this leg. So that means it doesn't use too much this leg. And there's an imbalance there. And you see, you know, that's, you know, it's like an S. Like this, and you see the, the jaw going on the left you know, and the third jaw on the right. Just that's the first information. So we're going to do that. And then just assessing, as spoke of tension and compression, just assessing this midline from trying to put you know, the fulcrum on the sacrum. There I am. And some people they need to be careful of the he has an imbalance in the lower back you know, and in the legs. But for now, I just want to put my. So be, remember also not to go into your patient, not to, to want too much, and not to let the patient go into you. Just to make the interface. Now here we are. There's an interface between. That's the therapeutic interface. And now there's a change in his breathing. I'm on the second, his eyes you know, are changing. Now I'm connected with, the, with his central axis. And from there, I'm fit. Just let it go. And I feel a gentle, I feel a gentle traction. And I feel like if I have a cage or, or a cell or horses. See what's happening. Now there's a neutral. So when you come to a neutral, don't do anything. Don't concentrate. We do too much. Just be still. See what's happening with the rhythm. The change is coming to the thoracolumbar spine, junction. Still, my intention, I'm not listening to other information is fine. There's, there's a lot of information, but I stay just here. Feel the change in the room. Everyone who is connected, everyone is treating me. There are 50 people treating me. Oh, that's good. Okay. I don't have to do something. I'm not a healer. I'm just you know, a therapeutic facilitator. And I stay there. See what's happening. I don't know at home what can happen. I just follow confidence in my clever hands. Or thinking hands. I need just to move a little bit to assess the change. And now I feel the side bending of the vertical axis with the left thorax. of neutral, but there's a process happening very good. And I'm just present. It's like now the right side is shorter. Now something is coming. Baker is involuntary part of the body or shadow part in the world. Now I feel yes. So I can just stop now. I have to make 
the burn, you have to swallow. So that, that's quite a plan. And then you can go to another cycle and another cycle and go from different places. Group. So, what I what I did just checking the longitudinal axis of the patient as a as a fulcrum. You know, and you know when you see this fulcrum like uh, being in under a cascade, you can feel really the light coming in, you know, and coming down. Yes. So, looking for this self-organization process that changing. Often in my practice, I spend a long time just working on this axis, and that changed a lot of things. And when people recover, they say, oh yeah, the pain there and there have disappeared. So they were secondary uh, problems. For me, it's important to be grounded and open, but for some people, they don't need to be aware of it. They do it correctly, but for me, it's important. The patient is coming with his history, you know, and uh, you know, it's like a tree. You see, when you cut a tree, you know all what happened different years. You know, and it's coping to your hand, and then it is a bit change. For me, the, do the neutral is a door. Uh, not only for me, it's coming from Ronnie Baker, right? and I learned it from Jim James. Uh, I have to thank my teachers. I think we need to be heart-centered on the infinity. And you did it very well. We did it. So there's a new beginning coming to our clever hands. And then it's important to have reflection on this practice. But I think I go a little bit further. So what I felt, I think we have to include all what's mental and shadow, the shadow part of ourselves, like an iceberg, <coughs> the huge part. The automatic mantle is 80% of our thoughts. I think you have it on your handout, this, this slide. So 80% of our thoughts are the same. You know? Every day, we have 80% of our thoughts that are the same than yesterday. That's sad. You know? <laughs> so, for me, I feel it's sad, because I need to have new, new uh, uh, things coming, new events. And when I think of myself, if I let things happen, I'm always thinking to the same you know, things. That's, so that we have a large shadow part. But the mantle of the present is the connection with the self. If we just like the experiment, I really felt it in the room at that time, the sensation of everyone being there and, and be well there. That's a still I think. That's why I still like to be in the nature. I like to teach in the nature. Next week I'm leaving tomorrow evening because on Monday I'm going to the Indian Ocean to teach in Reunion Island near Madagascar, a workshop to do that work in the lagoon, in the water, you know, things, and with the volcano. <laughs> it, will be in, it will be in German and French, because I'm teaching with a, a German doctor osteopath, Rudiger Goldenstein, you know, Rudiger, who's working on the on the bio, uh, how do you say, morphodynamic, uh, anyway. So, yeah. Uh, so, I just went into that bottom-up intelligence coming from nature, mineral grounding from the earth, we did it, vegetal orientation to light photon, and the animal share large spectrum of Perception and the emotions. We didn't go into that part, but it's part of us. And Steve used to say that human was at the top of all this, that it was a dual, you know, and still was said that human person were the dual at the top, top of all this. Beauty and simplicity. And I think the limit of what we perceive are not the limit of osteopathy, but are our limit. So the main tool at that level is working with empathy. That means this ability to identify with someone without losing our identity. That's difficult. To find the place to be from our heart with someone without losing what we are. So it's a, in relation with our experience, and that experience and can, that can be learned in books. Once again, it's coming 
from my intuition and be aware of all the retroaction coming from the patient all the time. Especially with uh, babies, I'm working in the maternity and we have to be very aware with babies not to be to have a transference with these babies, you know, they are so beautiful, so nice, you know, we just have to be on the right place, otherwise the mother can feel it, you know, that's that kind of thing, that's really important. So health, for me, there's a divine spot, or still, it's a kind of awakening we are working on, knowing it's not only uh, having a lot of information, there's no separation between all of us, and looking for unity. If you just get a look at one of the pictures everybody knows from a pleasure at the uh, certain at the end of his life, I really, when I look at him, at this picture, I really feel there's no force from outside, there's only that presence, that heart-centered way of being with this patient, I think. And it is still in biogenesis, also, that I encourage you to read this chapter, you know, the philosophy and, and, and the, the practice, that human life is eternal. There's no beginning, no end. Our physical house helps the union of matter and spirit through consciousness. Once again, it's going to unity. And if you work from the therapeutic process through <coughs> Steve Paulus, who gave, yes, I'm finished. You have it, you can read it. Uh, <laughs> so just a picture. I think the way of osteopathy is with sharing with Jane that unity of diversity that Renzo Molinari speak of, that we are from different levels going to the same to the same place and that's in relation with infinity. Thank you. There's a website where you have what I'm doing and what I'm doing. And otherwise, you have on your handout all the different sources. We've got time for just one or two questions. Okay. I'm sorry, I can't. Oh, yes. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. 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 With the endoscope and looking at them. Have you thought of uh, imaging those pictures in a different way with a different sort of energy level, you know, uh, thermally or electromagnetically? With the no, we are pictures? just at the beginning. I think for me, Gamberto is like the Commandant Cousteau, you know, the French Commandant Cousteau, <laughs> who first came into the water and, uh, you know, and everyone now knows that in the water. That's, and we are just beginning. And I wish there would be other teams, if you know, surgeons who are open to do that. There's so much to do. And we have hours of film that have, we have to work on. Uh, but we didn't want to through electromagnetic. One, one just one level we stopped with Gamberto is uh, on the show you say at the time we say we just, we are no more moving the fascia, just having the intention. And we have gloves when we do that, so we don't touch them. And my gloves and my, my colleagues, the same, became wet as soon as we say, we have uh, the intention of being there. It's full of water. So we say, and the surgeon said, we have to stop. There's water everywhere in the patient. We can't see anything. <laughs> so I said, that's an effect of intention. I said, no, you can't say that. I'm a scientific. You can't say that. <laughs> so now we have stopped there. But, so there's heat, health, uh, heat coming out. There's sure there are electromagnetic things coming out. But I have no experience. There's, so there's not, I mean, that's, that would be the fascinating thing to look actually inside what was going on when you put it hand in. There's a change in terms of the neurotransmitters being released, if those neurotransmitters then make a change to the structure. The only the fiber, thing... We talked about, you talked about fibroblasts as well, the yeah. function of that. And because that you, be you want to, to, to see to see only structure. But I know that heat coming and heat itself. You know, when we are three there in the block working, you know, and, you know, that's changes. He knows it. But he does not. He says, you are quite crazy. <laughs> but uh, he likes to do that. Have you tried to do sort of things like just eating up with a water bottle as well? Just what? Ice, ice and different things. And no, we didn't. We, what we did is just 
having <coughs> no one putting her hand. The second one, we asked the nurse to put her hand. There were no change. We had someone doing massage. And you see the different level moving. And when you do with the fascia looking, just listening to the tissue going to a neutral, there's different answers. And then the last thing, no, we, we went instead of being where the scar is, we were working on the wrist. And there were less changes, but there were changes there. And, uh, and the last thing, we worked with intention, not doing anything. And there, we felt the heat coming out, but the surgeon said, there's nothing uh, moving. <coughs> but you know, these researches, maybe have one minute more, he found out also there's a lot of uh, uh, pluripotential cells who are not used in our body. So what he did with the surgeon, and now it's in France, we can't speak of it, because he, put, he took some of this cell, and someone who had arthrosis of the knees, they put it into the knee, and they became a joint cell. And the, the man had no more pain. <coughs> but when they wanted to publish it, in France, the, the medical as surgeon association said, you don't have to speak of this. Uh, and, and so they stopped the experimentation, because it's, there's a lot of money, and, uh, lobbying, and things. Excuse me, sorry, can you just repeat that? Did you say that? We have inside us a lot of pluripotential cells yeah. that, have, uh, that can be used for other, you know, who, have not, who are not specialized. Instead of looking for only for those of embryos, you know, or from the cord. I'm, I'm thinking that in terms of research. Did you say that you used intention to make that change? Ah, yeah. I said um, I used intention, but the surgeon said, I don't see anything moving, but there were a lot of heat, so there's electromagnetic uh, answers. And I'm sure if we can measure. But you know, working in the, in the condition of surgery, it's difficult because we can't. You know, you know, like working with surgeons, it's difficult. And the nurses were really tired of us because <laughs> even the first time to put the glove, said, no, you touch something, come on, we start back, you make your gloves and uh, everything. 